Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be learning about the stability of structures. To start, we will be defining the conditions for a structure to be determinate, indeterminate or unstable, then moving on to covering methods for finding the degree of internal and external indeterminacy for structures in general, and we will finish by working through a couple of example problems implementing the newly learned theory. With regards to stability, a structure can be categorised as a determinate structure, an unstable structure, or a statically indeterminate structure. A determinate structure is one which has enough connections to be stable. An unstable structure is one which does not have enough connections to be stable. And a statically indeterminate structure is one which has more than enough connections than required to be stable. For example, consider this structure. We have four members in the shape of a square, connected by hinges. If we were to apply a horizontal force to one of the top nodes, the structure would move freely like this, therefore being unstable. Now, if we were to add a member connecting two opposite nodes, the structure will no longer be displaced when a horizontal force is applied, and therefore it is a determinate structure. If we were to add yet another member connecting the other two nodes, like this, again the structure would not be displaced due to an applied horizontal force. However, we have already seen that we do not need this extra member to achieve this and so we have more than enough connections than required, and we can call our structure statically indeterminate. An additional principle with statically indeterminate structures is that the forces in each member cannot be calculated using only equilibrium conditions. To determine the stability of a structure, we will separately analyse the internal stability and the external stability. The internal stability just evaluates if any parts of the structure can move relative to others and the external stability evaluates whether there are enough support reactions such that the structure cannot move as a rigid body. And then, the overall stability is the sum of the internal and external stability. It should be noted though that if a structure is not externally stable, or in other words there are not enough support reactions to prevent all possible movements of the structure, the internal stability cannot compensate it, and so the structure will be unstable overall. The external stability can be worked out quite easily, and is simply defined as the number of support reactions minus 3. In equation form, we write this as alpha E equals R minus 3, where alpha E is the external stability index and R is the number of support reactions. Let's have a look at some examples to see this in practice then. The first structure is supported by a roller at point A resulting in one support reaction, and is free at the other end, resulting in no support reactions. The structure has a total of one support reaction, and therefore the external stability index is equal to 1 minus 3, which equals negative 2. So, structure 1 is not externally stable. The second structure is supported by a roller at point A, resulting in one support reaction, and another roller at point B, resulting in one additional support reaction. The structure has a total of two support reactions, and therefore the external stability index is equal to 2 minus 3, which equals negative 1. So structure 2 is also not externally stable. The third structure is similar to the second, where both ends are supported by rollers, however the member is diagonal rather than being horizontal. Therefore this structure still has a total of two support reactions, resulting in an external support index of 2 minus 3 which equals negative 1, and again is not externally stable. The fourth structure is supported by a roller at point A, resulting in one support reaction, and a hinge support at point B, resulting in two support reactions. This structure has a total of three support reactions, and therefore the external stability index is equal to 3 minus 3, which equals 0. So, structure 4 is externally stable, and can be classified as externally determinate. The fifth structure is supported by a roller at point A, resulting in one support reaction, and is fixed at point B, resulting in three support reactions. The structure has a total of four support reactions, and therefore the external stability index is equal to 4 minus 3, which equals 1. So structure 5 is externally stable, and can be classified as externally indeterminate, of degree plus 1. The final structure is fixed at point A and point B resulting in a total of 6 support reactions. Therefore, the external stability index is equal to 6 minus 3, which equals 3. 
So, structure 6 is externally stable and can be classified as externally indeterminate of degree plus 3. It is important to note with this rule that there are some exceptions, and these structures have improper constraints. Firstly, if all the support reactions are parallel, the structure is unstable. For example, looking at this structure, the structure is supported by rollers at point A, B and C. Therefore, the structure has a total of three support reactions, and using our previous rule, the external stability index would be equal to zero, making it externally determinate. However, all of the support reactions are parallel to each other in the vertical direction, and so, if a force with a horizontal component was applied to the structure, the structure would be able to move as a rigid body, and therefore it is externally unstable. The second exception for our rule is if all the structure's support reactions intersect at the same point. Here we have a structure which is once again being supported by rollers at points A, B and C. Again, the structure has a total of three support reactions, and using our previous rule, the external stability index would be equal to zero, making it externally determinate. However, all the support reactions intersect at a single point as we can see here. And so, if a force were applied to the structure such that the line of action did not pass through the point of intersection of the support reactions, the force would create a moment relative to that point and the structure would move as a rigid body, and therefore the structure is externally unstable. The internal stability of a structure is a little bit more complicated. Here we will start off with the simpler method for determining the internal stability of a generic structure, and we will look at a more thorough method in a future video when we have learned about trusses. So, for the simpler method, we will state that a structure that looks like a tree is stable. And by tree, I mean a structure that has no releases and no closed loops. Here are a couple more examples of structures that looks like a tree. For now though, we will consider this example. This structure contains no releases and no closed loops, and therefore it is statically determinate. Now, let's have a look at a very similar structure. However, our second structure has a closed loop here. If we were to transform our second structure into something like our first structure, we would be required to include three releases. A hinge to release the moment, a shear release and an axial release to release the shear and axial forces respectively. Therefore, the second structure has three more connections than the first structure, and it has three more connections than is needed to be internally stable. Thus, it is internally indeterminate of degree plus three. Now let's have a look at a third structure, again similar to the previous two. This structure has a closed loop and a hinge between two of the members. For general structures like this, hinges between members correspond to releases, which reduce the degree of stability by one. If the hinge connects more than two members, like this, the degree of stability would be reduced by the number of connected members minus one, which would equal two for this example. Therefore, for our third structure, the closed loop adds 3 to the degree of internal indeterminacy, and the hinge subtracts 1. Therefore, the degree of internal indeterminacy for structure 3, alpha i, is equal to 3 minus 1, which equals plus 2. Finally, let's have a look at another similar structure. This fourth structure is most similar to the first, in that it does not have a closed loop, however, this structure does have a hinge connecting two members. For this structure then, the degree of internal stability is equal to negative 1, and so the structure is internally unstable. We can now determine the total stability of a structure by summing the external and internal stabilities, but again, remember that an externally unstable structure will always be unstable, regardless of the internal stability. So, let's have a look at an example problem where we must calculate the support reactions for a structure that is externally indeterminate, but internally unstable. The structure is being supported by hinge supports at point A and B, and therefore has a horizontal and vertical support reaction at both of these points, as denoted in the diagram. Working out the degree of external indeterminacy, we get alpha E is equal to 4 minus 3, which equals plus 1. And then, working out the internal indeterminacy, we have one hinge at point C, which is linking two members, so the degree of internal indeterminacy is equal to minus 1, i.e. the structure is internally unstable. However, summing the external and internal degrees of indeterminacy, 
we get 1 minus 1, which equals 0. So overall, the structure is stable and we can calculate all four support reactions. Using our conditions for equilibrium, we know that the structure cannot move horizontally, as the sum of all horizontal forces must be equal to zero. We also know that the structure cannot move vertically, as the sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero, and we also know that the structure cannot rotate around a specified point, as the sum of all moments relative to a point must be equal to zero. For this structure though, there can be another type of movement, where the member to the right of the hinge can rotate in relation to the member to the left of the hinge. To prevent this, we must ensure that forces and moments applied to the structure on the left side of the hinge do not cause a moment relative to the hinge, and the same goes for the forces and moments applied to the right side of the hinge. Therefore, considering the left side, the sum of all moments applied to the left side of the structure relative to the hinge must be equal to zero. So let's apply these equations to our structure. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to rxa plus rxb equals zero. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to ryA plus ryB minus five equals zero. Taking anti-clockwise rotation to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point B is equal to minus RYA times 10 minus RXA times 2 plus 5 times 7 equals 0. And finally, the sum of all moments applied to the structure on the left side of the hinge is equal to minus RYA times 6 plus 5 times 3 equals 0. Now we just need to work through the equations to find the unknown support reactions. Starting with equation 4, as that only has one unknown, rearranging for RYA, we get RYA equals 5 times 3, all divided by 6, which equals 2.5 kilonewtons. We can now substitute this value into equation 2 to find RYB. Doing so, and then rearranging for RYB, we get RYB equals 5 minus 2.5, which equals 2.5 kilonewtons. Next, we will substitute our value for RYA into equation 3, and then rearrange for RXA, giving us RXA equals 5 times 7 minus 2.5 times 10, all divided by 2, which equals 5 kilonewtons. And finally, we will substitute this value into our first equation, and rearranging for RXB, we get RXB equals negative 5 kilonewtons. So we can conclude that for our structure, at point A there is a horizontal support reaction of 5 kilonewtons, which is acting towards the right, and we have a vertical support reaction of 2.5 kilonewtons acting upwards. Then, at point B, there is a horizontal support reaction of 5 kilonewtons, which is acting towards the left, and we have a vertical support reaction of 2.5 kilonewtons acting upwards. So now that we've worked through that, Let's have a look at a final, much more complicated example problem. If you are comfortable in that you understood how we solved the last example, pause the video here and see if you can find the support reactions for this structure. Welcome back if you did have a go at finding the support reactions for this structure. So just to summarise what we have, the structure is being supported by hinge supports at point A and B, and we have a hinge connection at point C. A vertical force of 10 kN is being applied in the downwards direction to the structure at point C, and we have a uniformly distributed load of 4 kN per metre being applied over a length of 8 metres here. Due to the hinge supports, we have a horizontal support reaction and a vertical support reaction at point A and also at point B. This structure is the same as the last structure, where we get a degree of external indeterminacy of plus 1, and a degree of internal indeterminacy of minus 1. Therefore, the structure is internally unstable, but summing the external and internal degrees of indeterminacy, we get 1 minus 1, which equals 0. So, overall, the structure is stable, and we can calculate all four support reactions. Applying our conditions for equilibrium, and taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to rxa, plus rxb plus 4 times 8 equals 0. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to ryA minus ryB 
minus 10 equals 0. Taking anticlockwise rotation to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point A is equal to minus 10 times 4 minus RYB times 16 minus RXB times 8 minus 4 times 8 times 8 over 2 equals 0. And finally, the sum of all moments applied to the structure on the left side of the hinge is equal to minus RYA times 4 equals 0. Now we just need to work through the equations to find the unknown support reactions. Starting with equation 4, as that only has one unknown, rearranging for RYA, we get RYA equals 0 kilonewtons. We can now substitute this into equation 2 to find RYB. Doing so and then rearranging for RYB, we get RYB equals negative 10 kilonewtons. Next, we will substitute our value for RYB into equation 3 and then rearrange for RXB, giving us RXB equals 160 minus 40 minus 128, all divided by 8, which equals negative 1 kilonewton. And finally, we will substitute this value into our first equation and rearranging for RxA, we get RxA equals 1 minus 32, which equals negative 31 kilonewtons. So we can conclude that for our structure at point A, there is a horizontal support reaction of 31 kilonewtons, which is acting in the left direction, and we do not have a vertical support reaction, as RYA is equal to 0. Then, at point B, there is a horizontal support reaction of 1 kilonewton, which is acting in the left direction, and we also have a vertical support reaction of 10 kilonewtons, which is acting upwards. So to recap what we have covered in this video, we have defined the conditions for a structure to be determinate, indeterminate, or unstable. We have covered methods for finding the degree of internal and external indeterminacy for structures in general, and we have worked through a couple of example problems implementing the newly learnt theory. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.